Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Marco Lali, and I'm the head of sales for IOXA Biosystems here in the United States. I would like to welcome you all to the, much, to the March Lunaris webinar. We'd like to thank each of you for taking the time out of your schedules in order to attend, and hope you'll find the presentation both informative and relatable to the work you all do on a daily basis. Our speaker today is our in-house expert and field application scientist, Dr. Alex Karali. So without further ado, I'd like to turn the controls over to him so we can get started. As a housekeeping note, we'd like uh, to ask you all to hold your questions till the end of the presentations or to utilize the chat function built within the webinar. Uh, we would greatly appreciate it and we'll look forward to answering all your questions afterwards. Alex, it's all yours. Thank you, Marco. Uh, appreciate the kind introduction that you had. Uh, just want to make sure everything is working. Can you see my screen and the first slide? Yep, looks good. Perfect. Welcome, everyone. Uh, again, my name is Alex Crowley. I'm the field application scientist here at AOXA in the United States. And today for our webinar, we're going to be foregoing the traditional format um, where we pretty much present mostly about our technology and a few use cases, but rather I've actually, all our invites are people from the ophthalmology field. So we want to focus more on the use cases and therefore we're going to just do a brief introduction of our technology um, and then followed by uh, several use cases, scenarios where people and customers or collaborators are using uh, the Lunaris technology in the field. So as I said, uh, today's presentation is on ophthalmology research, which is very exciting for AOXA because this is the, the original roots where everything starts. Um, the inventors, both in the ophthalmology field, and they knew samples were very precious and scarce. And they wanted to bridge that gap and kind of work with clinical research as well as animal, model, animal models in order to identify proteins. And therefore, the Lunaris uh, technology was born. Uh, with our ophthalmology kits, uh, we can actually analyze several ocular diseases, uh, ocular surface diseases such as allergies, uh, dry eye, chemical burns, to intraocular diseases, looking at AMD, rhinopathy, uh, ocular trauma, glycoma, et cetera. So multiplexing. Uh, for those that don't know, multiplexing allows its users to analyze several, anal or analyze several analytes at one time rather than one point. With our technology, uh, it, or the Lunaris technology is an immunoassay platform, which is bead-based, uh, where we can analyze anywhere from three to 12 analytes per sample. Uh, we can measure clinically relevant sample types, and for those in the field, that includes aqueous humor and vitreous humor. And uh, for what we can detect are several or our secreted markers, including cytokines, chemokines, in both growth and complement factors. Now, here what you see is a picture of our biochip, which is kind of the heart and soul of our technology. Um, in each well, we have approximately 10,000 micro cavities, uh, which houses our beads, um, which you could see in the following and subsequent uh, photos in the image. Performance wise, our sensitivity is a about one peak is at one picogram per milliliter uh, with high precision and accuracy. Our dynamic range is between three to four logs um, and data quality again uh, with low CVs and recovery rates between 80 and 120%. Now what sets us out, sets us apart from our competitors is that we only require as little as three microliters per sample um, that way, everything looks great. <clears throat> uh, we also offer a flexible format. Um, so each biochip contains 96 wells, where you can read either one biochip all the way up to four, um, therefore including 384 wells, depending on which reader you choose. Now, in-house, our manufacturing um, department actually 
our, our production team manufactures each chip through a sequential deposition process. So if we take a look, this would be more of an example for a fourplex. For each chip, our first analyte will be deposited. Um, in this case, IL-1 beta. Um, once the beads are deposited into the well, a photo is captured. This records the coordinates and the location of the beads. Then our next analyte, IL-2, would be deposited and a photo would be captured following each step. And once the last uh, analyte is um, poured, we then take a final photo and uh, that way we have everything stored on a, all locations for each bead stored on a chip specific data file, which is included with your kit. Um, this actually also sets us apart from our competitors. Um, so this is actually more randomized or therefore you can take out variability um, from that portion as well. Um, with our readers, we offer real-time imaging. Um, this is a screenshot of an actual read uh, where you will be able to see both the microscopic bright field images as well as the fluorescent image as well. Um, now, when we talk about our Lunaris platform, that includes three components. Our kits, pictured here on the left. Um, again, we can detect volumes as low as three microliters. For our kits, everything is included, our biochips, reagents, standards, et cetera, including the data file with uh, the houses, um, the data, uh, bees location that I just explained. Uh, second component is our breeder. Um, our breeder kit is a dedicated benchtop device. It's about the size of a laser, small laser printer. And what's truly unique is just the load and read. Um, it's truly plug and play. Once you finish your assay, you just plug the uh, biochip in on the plate and just press play. Uh, Time-wise, you can read up to 384 samples in less than one hour. For one biochip, it usually takes about 10 to 12 minutes. And then our final component is our Lunaris software. Uh, this software is truly user-friendly. Um, as a professional in the field, I've worked with it. It's really easy. You're just usually, usually just uploading two files. Um, you have the options to complete data reports in less than one minute. And you also have the ability to extract all raw data, um, results in graphs, which is also great. Um, and you can export those either through Excel or in a PDF file. Application-wise, um, for Lunaris and for the following presentation, um, this <clears throat> image for the eye is kind of how I'm going to focus the following, the remainder of our presentation. Um, I just, I'm not going to go over the anatomy, but I structured this presentation uh, we're going to be going from out to in, almost kind of thinking more viscosity. So we're going to start with tear fluid um, and work our way into vitreous humor. Uh, and then lastly, looking at tissue homogenous, a sample uh, where an investigator is working with RPE. And I do want to uh, mention that uh, here at AOXA, we are actually working with another collaborator looking at cell culture supernatant with Lunaris um, using an organoid on a chip or a 3D cell culture model where they developed um, these models using stem cells. So moving on, uh, before we get into specifics, uh, I just want to look at kind of go over some of our kits that we have uh, dedicated to the ophthalmology field. Um, the first one is our mouse fourplex ophthalmology kit. Um, to the right, you will see our analytes, um, as well as our limit of detection in picograms per milliliter, followed by our lower limits and upper limits of quantification and dynamic range. Um, and what you can see here, and what I want to point out, is that our dynamic range and limit of detections are in the single, single digits. Our next kits, which are our flagship um, 
uh, kits for our company is our cytokine kits for both mouse and human. So if you're looking for more inflammation, this is a kit and an option for you to look at. Um, and again, both low limit of detection and the dynamic range are in the single digits for most analytes. Um, in our pipeline, we are set to release a complement panel in the upcoming months. Um, here is where I would like to just encourage you to take a look at our website. Um, and for our different kits, we offer over 23 different kits. And there you can see which analytes belong to which kids and the application fields as well. <clears throat> now, moving our first use case scenario. So here we're going to look at the tiers. Start with the tiers, I should say. Um, we recently published not only a publication, but an application note where we analyzed tear fluids from patients with Sorgen syndrome or dry eyes. Um, this paper was just recently published in Ocular Immunology and Inflammation. And briefly, our field application scientist in Asia uh, came up with a protocol along with our scientists uh, where we can analyze biomarkers in tears by using Schreimer strips, which if you look here at the bottom at this figure, uh, the Schreimer strips are just placed to the eyelid. Um, they are cut and measured, and we can have a process where we elute the biomarkers or the side of, or uh, the markers um, uh, just through use either by the thermocycler, um, and then it's ready for our kit. Um, continuing on, so we knew that dry eye disease is a major public health concern, and we've worked with this. Um, knowing that tears are a complex sample material type. Uh, we worked, um, if you look at our human 11 plex cytokine panel that we mentioned before, uh, you can actually see for each, um, each analyte, the limit of detection is, uh, the lower limit of quantification is where the vertical white bar is, um, and our upper limit of quantification is um, at the end, where we can measure up to nanograms, almost micrograms for each analyte. Uh, tear recovery. Uh, now, when we did our validations kit, our validation studies, as well as what was published, uh, you could see for 10 out of the 12 analytes, that fell in between 80 to 100 to 20%. Uh, this was using the Schreimer strips. Um, where we did have a little bit of an issue with IL-10 recovery, um, but with microcapillary tubes, which is another method of tear collection, uh, we did notice that it was in within the recovery range. Um, and then data results from that publication, um, if we look up or look at up on top, we will see our TH1 markers where they measured from the tiers from both control samples and the Sorgen syndrome or Sorgen's disease patient. Um, and this data was generated in collaboration from uh, Singapore Eye Research Institute with Louis Tong. Uh, each analyte was measured from the left eye. The top field, we have our TH1 markers. Um, interferon gamma, IL-2, 10, and TNF-alpha. Um, and then our bottom, we had our TH2 markers as well as IL-1 beta. And for each one listed, you can see that there is a significant upregulation um, compared to the control. Now, on the opposite end of the field, so here we're looking at tears and mice. Uh, this was done, this work was done by Yusham Bo and Kendrick Shaw from Hong Kong University. And this was a poster presentation uh, presented at Arvo in 2019. Um, and here they analyzed biomarkers in tears in hyperglycemic mice or Akita mice following alkaline injury. Tear samples ranging from 2.2 microliters to 5.3 microliters were collected uh, using the Schreimer strips. Uh, 
along with the process that I briefly described earlier. And you can see for VEGF, IGF, and CCL2, our wild type animals uh, showed higher levels of each analyte compared to our diabetic, um, diabetic or diseased mice. Um, and they concluded that sustained hyperglycemia might impair corneal reepithelization. Um, next, moving in, we're going to look at cytokines and aqueous humor. Um, this study was done by a collaboration through IRIS, uh, which is a European organization that we work with. Um, and here we're going to show matching patient samples collected um, and compare aqueous humor, which is shown in blue, versus plasma shown in red. Now, when we look at the aqueous humor, we can see significant differences, um, rather in use uh, significant differences for a few of the analytes uh, for N2, uh, PDGF, as well as placental growth factor. But if we look at the plasma, uh, we do not see any differences. So this actually calls not only for a low sample um, working with the aqueous humor, we actually see that we actually get better results, or I would say significant results um, when looking at analytes and providing you with a different means of research, research uh, technology. Um, next, uh, this was a study that was published by Lunzig et al. Um, in ophthalmology in 2019. Uh, this was done out of Harvard University at MEEI. And this, they wanted to actually define the cytokine signature profile of patients who were underwent repeated DMET procedures due to graft failure. All tested cytokines, especially IL-5 and IL-8, were elevated and concluded that these biomarkers um, per, were perhaps the underscore um, of relevancy to DMET graft failure. For our next use case, uh, we will be looking at cytokines in the vitreous humor in diabetic retinopathy. Um, again, here, normally we would, I would talk about it for our new customers about the anatomy, but I know a lot of you guys know this already. Uh, I just want to point out within the vitreous humor, uh, this matrix is actually very difficult to work with. It's very gelatinous. Um, the extracellular matrix composed of uh, different types of collagen and fibrillin um, binds those growth factors. So our side team of scientists actually developed a protocol which has been validated, which allows us or allows you to break down the vitreous humor in a working uh, solution and test different biomarkers as needed. Um, and here, this is an example where we looked at diabetic patients, uh, intravitreal um, protein concentrations in diabetic patients that either had diabetic retinopathy in D, labeled DR or no diabetic retinopathy, as well as a negative control or non-diabetics. Um, and using our ophthalmology kit, uh, it was a sixplex. We saw for the three major analytes, um, IL-6, IL-8, and VEGF was uh, upregulated significantly compared to the uh, um, no DR and non diabetic controls. And then for our final use case, um, we'll take a look at angiogenic mediators in a mouse model of choroidal neovascularization. Um, now, this data was obtained um, from a collaboration partner from the University of Cologne. Um, and here they used a mouse model of laser-induced choroidal neovascularization. Uh, 
Uh, samples were taken for, at three and seven days post procedure, and um, we they analyzed the ret retinal pigment epithelium uh, homogenate. Um, and again, you can see for some of the um, analytes at day three, we see a significant upregulation of CCL2, IGF, PDGF, um, and then at day seven. We see a decrease from our controls that's significant, um, as well as for VEGF and PDGF uh, biomarkers. And just to summarize, um, again, the Lunaris technology, uh, you can achieve more from less. Uh, you only require three microliters of sample per, uh, per well. Uh, Lunar's technology is robust, robust and reproducible using our planner bead-based detection system. It's modular or scalable uh, anywhere from 96 wells, um, as you can see to the right, photo at the bottom of the right, all the way up to 384 samples for high throughput screening. And our Lunar's kits are validated for specified matrices, uh, just to kind of move on forward to this, uh, our ophthalmology kits are uh, uh, validated for aqueous humor, vitreous humor, cell culture supernatant, as well as serum and plasma. Um, and then we also have a couple other kits, such as our flagship kits, that are the cytokine ones, that are validated for those matrices as well. And before we take any questions, um, if you take a look on our website, uh, we do have a section where we do um, we list publications uh, that for individuals who used our um, technology as well as application notes. So here you can see a couple selected publications for the ophthalmology field, um, and as well as our uh, application note uh, for tear fluid analysis, which you can download. Um, and at this time, I'd like to thank everyone for attending. I know it's a short webinar, but just want to make sure that you guys understand um, that what is capable through using Lunaris. Um, and at that point, I will take any questions.